Welcome back to DBL. For the past four years, a mystery has loomed in the woods of Atlanta. A man allegedly attacked his mother and girlfriend and was never, ever seen again. So where did he go and could he still be alive? Here's a look in today's True Crime Chronicles. Decorious Jones was just 20 years old. He was working odd end jobs in Georgia with aspirations of becoming a chef. It was October 15, 2016, a day his girlfriend will never forget. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's hitting me, he's grabbing me. Decorious attacks and chokes his girlfriend. She narrowly escapes and hides underneath the apartment staircase calling police and Decorious's mother for help. So when he seen her, it's like he just went into a rage because I said, he was telling me she the devil, mama don't talk to her, she the devil, she the devil. Shakora Jones tries to calm her son down, but fears for her own life and desperately calls police again. Just stay on the phone with me, okay? But I'm really afraid for my life. She tells police not to shoot her son. Just stun him, you have to, don't kill him, please. One of you is telling police don't shoot him. He is a big guy. He w potentially was under the influence of something. And no, I did not want him to kill my son. They never shot him because police couldn't find him. We searched that entire section of woods and it backs up to 316. He vanished, leaving everything behind. So this is his wallet. All his stuff, his ID, his bank card all his personal information. Stuff you can't really get far if you don't have. A private investigator took over the case, but ran into dead ends. There's no proof that he's dead, and there's no proof that he's alive. The one clue? Sakura says her son recently admitted to taking acid a week before he disappeared. I think it's curiosity, you know, and he told me he had tried it. And, that's, and I'm like, don't try it no more. Are you afraid he did try one more? I think he did. And you can have psychosis, what we call drug-induced psychosis. And some people don't come back from it. What do you mean? Is it the, it's altered the function and the structure of their brain? Meaning he could still be out there, alive and hiding, or hurting others. Earlier, Tori Allen Brandon spoke with a reporter who covered this case from the beginning. Take a look. We are joined now by investigative reporter Rebecca Lindstrom from 11 Alive in Atlanta, Georgia. Rebecca, it's been four years now. Do you think Decorious is still out there and any idea of where possibly he could have gone? That is a tough one because you want to be hopeful, right? And right. there is reason for optimism. We haven't found his body or his bones despite disappearing in a major metro area. But on the flip, if he is alive, no matter how upset or ashamed, you would think in four years he would have reached out to someone in his right. family, some friend. So what I really do wish wherever he is, is that either way, this family could get some closure. Rebecca, I have to ask you, how are the victims, you know, his mother, his former girlfriend, how are they doing? And just basically, what do they want to see happen with this case? They have so much compassion for him. We had an opportunity to talk with his girlfriend and even after she experienced all of this, all she really wants is for him to be found, to know what's really happened to him. I think that there's just this confusion, this sadness, this frustration in not knowing. It is so mysterious to think of someone without shoes, without a shirt, just disappearing. Now, who would give that person a ride in a car, right? right and right. if they did, you think they'd remember it. And th then they would call police when they realized that this was a story, was a case with that kind of tip and information for police to be able to follow. Rebecca, as an investigative reporter, you're used to covering these type of stories, so what makes this one stand out from the rest? I think it is just the nature of his disappearance. I think one of the tragedies that happened after his disappearance was the cell phone. His mother had kept that phone active hoping that if a friend were to call Decorious, you know, on his number, that she might be able to get some leads or information from that friend, or perhaps if that's the only number that he remembered, mm. that he would call it and then she'd be able to reach out to him. Well, police asked for that phone. They wanted to be able to search it for clues, but in the process of doing that forensic investigation, that cell phone was lost. It is yet to be recovered, so it is just one more mystery, one more 
disconnect wow. for this family as they search for someone they love so dearly. Another loss for the family. I mean, they just got, they have to get a win. Well, I hope keeping this uh, in the news will do that. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank to you. read more on this case, visit 11alive.com. You can also learn more in a new podcast episode out now. Just search True Crime Chronicles on your favorite podcast player. Rebecca, thanks again.